on YouTube. You're watching Old Mate's Backyard Tech. I am in no way, shape, or form a fully qualified mechanic, auto electrician, or auto HVAC technician. Therefore, if you are following along with this service repair and or information video, you are doing this at your own risk. So you have been warned. All right. Yesterday for weekend Saturdays here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech, I've got out a preview video regarding two 80 series videos that were on the cards today for weekend Sundays here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech. But as mentioned in the weekend Sunday promo uploaded earlier this morning, we're only doing one of those videos because the second video regarding the car radio speaker and the back passenger door, well, I can't find the bits and pieces I need to fix it. So instead, we're going to have a bit of a sticky beak at the other video that I had planned. Now, this is only an inspection video. As you can see in the background, it's 80 series time here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech. And for this one, I want to have a look at that fusible relay link coming off the positive side of the battery that goes down to the starter motor. I have a sneaking suspicion I'm going to be up for another one sooner than I thought. One of the best four-wheel drives ever made. Here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech. It's 80 series time. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is 80 series time here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech for weekend Sundays and we're only going to get out one of the two videos that I previewed yesterday for weekend Saturdays. Once I find those bits and pieces I need to fix that back door um, speaker in the 80, we'll get onto that video. But for this one, I, we're not going to fix anything. I just want to do an inspection video on that fusible link relay off the positive side of the battery on the 80 that goes that goes to or ends up, take your pick, pick one, you'll be right, ends up down at the starter motor. I've mentioned in the past that I've had trouble with that, that fusible link relay. And what I want to do is actually get into it today and find out what's going on because sometimes what ends up happening is, is that the car won't start properly. And when I bang that relay, that fusible link relay, it comes up. Now, I'm on my, I think I'm on my third one for that. Um, I mean, they're, they're reasonably inexpensive. Now that I'm working, I've got the money to do it, but that's not the point. I don't want to be blowing cash that I don't have to blow on the 80. But I need to keep the 80 going because, well, I need it for work. So... What I want to do particularly for this video is just have a sticky beak at it. I don't want to do anything to it. I don't want to, maybe you guys might pick something up that I don't see, but I want to have a look at that fusible link relay because I have a sneaking suspicion it's a bit as your father. Um, and then find out whether or not there is something actually wrong with it. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping it's just, you know, it may just need cleaning or I may need to, you know, adjust some cabling, tighten up the the wire hooks uh, rather than having to go and buy another one. So let me grab the video camera, the tripod, the car keys to the AD. Let's head out to the old girl and have a bit of a sticky beak at that fusible relay link. Let's get into it. All right. So this is what we're looking at here. Now, I'm not going to disconnect anything. I was just trying to remember how to open the bloody thing. <laughs> Um, so I don't want to if I don't have to, but I think I'm going to have to. Yeah, I am. Hang on. All right, I'm just going to take the um, take the top terminal off, which is that relay, without shorting out the uh, without shorting it out. At least trying not to short it out. I think I'm going to end up losing power to the whole vehicle. <laughs> yeah, I am. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I am going to lose power. Damn it. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. It's all right. Put that back on there, actually, for the time being. Okay. So how do we get into this now? I've been into it before. Oh, that's right. You unclip it. All right. You know 
want it's actually locked in bugger me well that might be part of the issue it's actually it's supposed to open up just by squeezing and popping it there it goes there it goes got it all right now how's it actually look in there not good by the looks of it oh no well that's broken oh dear I'm gonna have to tape that back together oh that's not good All right. so badly twisted as well twisted and cracked I wonder if this has had it again let me zoom in you guys might be able to see something that I'm not oh, there we go that doesn't look necessarily healthy does it um, let me just go grab my torch and we'll have a better look at it hold on oh, I've got it out of frame hang on oh, I'll put the torch out here but to me it does not look good sorry I know you can't see it but I can't twist I can't twist these wires properly but that does not look good very dirty and rusted all right um, you guys can't see they probably can you really that just does not look good to me hmm broken that you can sort of see where I've snapped it off right along here it's supposed to unclip but uh, damn well will have a look at that that's all rusted and burnt Okay, well we do have a bit of an issue then, don't we, peoples? Um, Alright, luckily I've got some tape in the back of the car that I can use to tape that back up. But uh, that's a, that really doesn't look good, does it? Okay, well, you yeah, see that's got all that's got stupid brittle, really stupid brittle. Um, all right, I guess the only way I'm going to, because that's that that you can see the bit of rust there, but it's also gotten very hot and melted a bit. Point two five B two point oh start main. That's not good. Um yeah. I guess my only option I've got now is I have to consider either getting another one or pulling that completely down, stripping it, cleaning it, and to see if it becomes more reliable. But that's yeah, that's a problem. It's become very brittle, burnt and rusted. Okay, um, 
what I'll do, what I'm going to try and do, I guess you could call it rather than actually do, I'm not going to be able to do anything about it today. Okay, I think burnt and rusted. Now, this thing, as you guys know, has the starter motor for a 10. Uh, I think it was either the facelift or the one or 105 series 1FZFE. Um, for those of you who may not be aware, about six weeks after I bought the car. A starter motor on this let go and they couldn't get a starter motor for an 80 series 1FZFE quick enough and it was a very reputable auto elect near where I was living before we moved here and he rang me up and he said look I can get you a starter motor for a 100 series and I can fit it today I can have it here today and fit it today if you want to wait for the one that's supposed to be for your engine which is the 80 series he said it'd be three days before they could get one so I went with the 100 series starter motor which bolts up to this engine anyway my problem has always been though that this this unit here has been giving me grief for some time so this is a, I think I'll be on the fourth one I'm starting to wonder if part of the problem may be the fact that that starter motor is problematic as in you know it, it's pulling it's not you know it's pulling too much because this thing's a, a, a fast spinning starter motor it's a high speed starter motor and I'm wondering if the issues I've been having with this are because of that starter motor But it shouldn't really matter. It's just this thing cranks. As you guys know, this thing cranks over really fast. Um, there's a guy down the road from here. He's got a 1FZFE 94 facelift model. His doesn't crank near, near as quick as this thing cranks. So I'm wondering if the part of the issue is twofold. This has gotten very badly hot at some stage. Because this is, I think, that if I replace this again, this will be the fourth one I've put through it. So, I mean, it's not ideal, I know, but I'm, I'm not sure what else to do. Uh, all right. Well, that, that confirms that, I mean, it's not in great condition. And as you can see, it's you know, obviously perished. I may upgrade this. Um, Hobbs, uh, Mark, Kane, Joseph, any of you guys out there may want to comment on this and see whether or not I put on one for the 80 series or whether I've got to put on one for the 100 series. It shouldn't really matter. This is an 80 series um, fusible relay. Um, or fused relay, I should say. The thing is, is that if I bang that you know, when this thing doesn't want to start and I bang on that, this thing, primarily, it, it kicks up. So the problem's in that. But I'm now starting to think that maybe the issue is the, the fact that, that that starter motor that was put on this thing may be causing the issue. Yeah. See, the, these ones I've got, right, these are all from... Um, two separate Toyota dealerships, one back home in Melbourne and the one down here. But I think if I am forced to replace it, God, listen to those birds, will you? If I am forced to replace it, what I'll end up having to do is I might actually get, I might go to my trusted auto parts supplier that starts with R and ends in O and there's a e, e and a P and a C in there somewhere and um, buy one of their ones and see if that's any better. Um, 
I have this vague recollection that these fused relay, fusible link relay systems are the same from my, from the update model, the 93 update, through to 105. I have a suspicion they are exactly the same, but I could be wrong. Um, I mean, the 100 is just a 80 series with a different body on it, but the 105 is slightly different. I'll have to figure that out. Well, that's that that that's not what I wanted to see. <laughs> that is not what I wanted to see. Um, all right. Well, while it's off circuit, I will put that cover back on, tape it up. Um, now that it's busted, and. Uh, have to put it back together and it doesn't look healthy I know that but I mean look we know that looks can be deceiving but that wasn't what I wanted to see it really isn't what I wanted to see uh, it is brittle I mean everything the heat shrinks and all you can see where it's burnt in there as well I don't know how well the camera's picking that up but I'll quickly zoom in without shifting the camera on you you can see that's all burnt. The camera's not going to hold it still, old mate. The camera might focus. No, it's not going to focus. There we go. You can see how burnt that's got. So, all right. I'm going to have to figure that out. That's not ideal, but well, we'll we'll see what I can sort out. Um, what I might go and do is have a chat to the uh, have a chat to the guys that have done the AC on this. They're very reputable. They have an excellent reputation here in Geelong. I might actually go and have a chat to them about it and just uh, confirm, I guess you could say, my suspicions. And because um, I know they sell parts for people to self-fit if they want. Might end up doing that. That's. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't actually do that. That was done by someone else before I bought the vehicle. I've only ever replaced these. Just these things down here. So. All right. Well, that confirms my suspicions. Now I've got to talk. Now I've got to find up with a plan of attack. I guess before we finish this video. I'll do a bush mechanics repair on this thing. Oh, those damn pluffers. The tape's all knackered. See, absolutely stuffed this stuff. But it is good for fixing the 80. I've used it many times to hold things together while I buy bits. So let's just try and repair this as best we can. Luckily it's out of circuit, so I don't have to worry about getting a nasty uh, nasty shock. And for, uh, for those of us who've got 80s, we know how nasty these things can end up being. Completely stuffed. Okay. So now what I'll do is I will tape it there and there. This is good. This is actually good tape because it can put up with heat, which I guess is a little lucky to a point. It's clipped on that side, so I'll just make sure it tapes up on this side. And I'll hold it. So a bit of an old mate's temporary repair to hold this together. I guess this week I'll be going to that auto elect and having a chat with them. Just to see what they say. Mainly just to confirm my suspicions. That's all it's all it's for is to confirm my 
own personal suspicions. I'm not doing it for any other reason other than just to confirm my suspicions about it. And uh, let's make sure that can't come off again. You guys can see what I'm doing, can't you? Yep. All right. Covering grease and dirt and crap again. <laughs> So now what I'll do, ooh, that was a spark and a half, let's put that back on, tighten it down, I'll bring you guys up so you can actually see what I'm doing a bit, I'm just going to tighten the um, terminal back down. what we need to do is uh, make sure that everything's good to go because on the off chance I've got to work tonight I don't want this thing stuck here at home so what we will do people is I've got the mobile phone out here as a torch and what we shall do is get this thing recording So what I'm going to do is we'll do a cold start on this thing. All right, so I'll switch over to the uh, mobile phone camera. So obviously we know the mobile phone's going to have better sound than, than my uh, video camera's got. And uh, we will do a cold start. All right, on the mobile phone. Start her up. Oh, the auto choke didn't kick up. Oh dear. Well, that's not the first time that's happened. Let's uh, let's bring her up manually. Sometimes that happens that the auto choke on this thing just does not pick up properly. And it starts like that. Let's wind up the throttle lock. The auto choke did not kick up that time, but I'm not overly worried. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. The fun thing about owning old vehicles is occasionally, there we go, occasionally their quirks show up, and that's one that my 80 series definitely has. There we go. 
All right, guys. Well, there we are. So we know I've got to do something about that fusible link relay sometime soon, and uh, we'll get that sorted out. I'll go have a chat to the Auto Elec, um, where I've had the AC done on this, as I mentioned. They're very reputable. I know them from the business community here in Geelong, so I know their quality. They did a fantastic job on the AC. They know me, so yeah, we'll. Uh, I'll go have a chat to them later in the week. Anyway, that's it for this 80 series video. I'll catch you and stick around because coming up after this video, we've got a bit of an unboxing video for you as well. Have a good one. This has been an Old Mate's Backyard Tech presentation.